everybody, Backyard Bully in here. Now today we have a infomercial style video for you all on testing your silver and gold at home non-destructively to help prevent those pesky fakes entering your stack and ruining your investment for the future. Today we aim to give an overview of four different tests and methods that one can employ at home inexpensively and tests that you don't need advanced degrees in mathematics or chemistry to employ. Those include the magnet or slide test, using the ping test sight, sound and sensors as well, weights and measures and a specific gravity test. We're also going to talk about some tips and hints, generally arming yourself with knowledge as a buyer to protect yourself from having the potential of those fakes coming in in the first place. So there's an awful lot to get through here today. This video is primarily aimed at new stackers who probably like myself were quite nervous about buying physical silver and gold for the first time and not knowing whether or not something would be genuine and real and how to test it. But hopefully there's something in this video as well for you seasoned stackers. And even if not, it'd be great to get your comments down in the comment section because I know a lot of the new stackers out there really absorb that knowledge and learn so much from us seasoned stackers. So feel free to comment and I'll see you down in the comment section. Okay, so part one of this infomercial is not really a test, so to speak, but it's kind of a test that you can employ at home before you buy something. It's the common sense test, I like to think of it. You know, if you're a brand new stacker and you're looking to get into gold, silver, I really do think the single best thing that you can do to protect yourself as a buyer is to buy from a reputable source. If you're going to get into physical silver, you want to know as much as possible ahead of time that what you're going to receive is in fact real and genuine. And the big, big dealers out there have an awful lot more to lose if they were to supply fake silver and gold coins than your Joe Blog average seller on social media, Gumtree, Craigslist, or whatever it might be, even eBay. eBay is full of fakes. And we'll maybe talk about eBay as we go throughout the video, but um, yeah, it, you know, it's one to perhaps avoid if you're a brand new stacker. Buyer protection is also really important as well. So use things like credit cards. If you've got zero interest payments on those type of things, it's a really good thing to be able to protect yourself as a buyer. Even using debit cards is a good way of protecting yourself. You might pay a little bit more because a lot of these sites will offer discounts if you pay for things using wire transfers or banks transfers. But ultimately, the protection that you get from, say, a credit card or something is really important. But generally speaking, if you buy from a reputable big dealer, the chances of getting supplied a fake silver or gold coin is pretty low. And a lot of the time, if you do have a fake silver or gold coin that has slipped through their nets, they'll look to rectify the situation pretty quickly and pretty swiftly because their reputation is key. They can't risk their business reputation on selling fake and gold silver coins. So that is probably the best place that you can start. Now let's crack on to the second point, which is the first physical test that you can employ to test your silver. So the first physical test that one can use to test your silver is probably the most inexpensive and easiest test of all. And that is using this tiny little silver disc that we've got here on the table. And this is a neodymium magnet. It's a rare earth magnet. It's a very strong magnet. They are very small, these ones. And I think I got a pack of 10 off eBay. I think it was for like two pounds 50 or something. So really, really cheap uh, magnets but also really effective. And the way that you do this, now you can do this with, there's different contraptions that you can have called slide, uh, slide frames or slide tests, but ultimately the same thing applies. And that is the magnet should slide down the silver coin nice and slowly and smoothly without rushing off very quickly. Now I do have a couple of fake coins on the table here and you can see the stark differences between these. So you see how this speeds up as it goes down the coin and even more so on this fake trade dollar that we have here. This is one of my biggest regrets and buys that I purchased ages ago on eBay. And you can see the magnet really sliding down. Now, the other great thing about this magnet is if this coin has anything ferrous in it, anything magnetic in it, this magnet's so strong that it will find it immediately and it will grab onto it really hard. I don't have a ferrous coin here to showcase for you, but I do have uh, a little bar here which is magnetic and you can see just how fast and how strong this magnet is. It will pick it up from 
a sizable difference and that will happen for a fake silver coin. So a little tiny magnet like this is a really great and quick way of being able to test your silver. You know, you can go over all of them very quickly like this and just see whether or not they are fake. Now with gold, very interestingly, the, uh, the reaction of the magnet on the gold is going to be slightly different to the silver. So you're not going to see uh, quite the same sort of speed down there, but it is still a bit sticky. It does still have a little bit of grip to it as the magnet comes down, but it is a little different. So that one's not necessarily the most reliable test for, um, you know, for gold, but it is certainly a very useful test. It does have its limitations though. If you've got a big chunky bar of silver like this kilo bar here, you'll see it runs down really nice and slowly. That's fantastic. However, the bar here is just so big and thick that if there was a fake core, if there was a lead core or something in this bar, this magnet would not be able to detect it, or if there was a ferrous metal right in the middle, it wouldn't be able to detect it, and you'd get essentially the same result because this bar is just so big and chunky. So that's definitely one of the limitations of this magnet test, but it's still a very, very good test in of itself. So go and arm yourself with a little neodymium magnet. Uh, you can buy them on Amazon, you can buy them on eBay. They're not very expensive and they're real lifesavers and very good pieces of equipment. Right, the next test that we are going to employ is the sensors test, as I call it. So these are using a collection of different sensors that you have as a human being that you can employ to really get to grips with whether or not something is real silver or not. Now the first thing, this does come from a bit of experience. So when you've handled a lot of silver coins and you know handling them with your bare hands is actually quite an important learning experience. You know you can feel how the silver absorbs the heat from your hand. Silver is an exceptional conductor. It's one of the most conductive metals, if not the most conductive metal out there in the world. And you know, if you've got a fake coin like this fake panda here, the difference in the heat absorption from your hand is really, really observable and you can feel the difference. Now that is not definitive, of course it's not, um, but there is a really cool way that you can see the different uh, conductivity of these different types of things. So we've got here an US Eagle and a fake trade dollar. So if we zoom in here, what we're going to do is the ice cube test. Now this isn't by no means a definitive test, but I think it's a really good way of demonstrating the different con conductivity and a quick indication of whether something is silver or not. You'll see that when we pop two ice cubes on, that the ice cube on the right, which is on the silver coin, is melting an awful lot faster than the one on the left. Now, of course, it's it's all going to be relative. You know, it's, it depends on what you're testing it against. Now, if we try the same test here on this silver bar, the big chunky silver bar, and the fake panda, which is here, hopefully this will even more demonstrate how different they are. So you've got the big silver coin and you've got the fake panda. Now, okay, granted, it's not that observable, but I hope you can see that this big chunky silver bar is really melting this ice cube a lot faster than this panda here. And in fact, the panda's almost stopped melting altogether, whereas the ice cube here, you can see it's moving around, it's melting so fast. That's because this big silver bar has an awful lot more absorption of that cold temperature, and it's just melting it super fast. You can see that there. So that's a very good, quick indication of whether something is genuine or not, but it's not definitive by any means. But again, you can employ some quick and easy sight and sensors to see whether or not something is genuinely silver or not. Now, the last kind of sight, uh, or I suppose sensor style test that you can employ is the ping test. Now, I've done videos on the ping test before. Essentially, the ping test is a way of seeing whether or not something is you know, truly a silver coin. The ping test doesn't really work on bars, but you can hear there a glorious, nice, resonating ping. And that comes from the structure of the silver in the silver coin form. It really does employ a nice sounding sound to it. This fake panda, you'll hear, if we can get it into focus, this fake panda will be, you can see that is drastically different. But again, the ping test is not necessarily definitive because this fake trade dollar, which is in theory made out of what's called Tibetan silver, so I don't know if there's any actual silver content in here, I don't think there is, but it has a bit of a ping. Enough to potentially, you know, potentially confuse some people out there. But different coins in different shapes 
will have different pings. In fact, let's use a non-wet one because these, you can hear there, that ping is decidedly different from the Britannia ping. So the size and shape of the coin, well, let's test it on one of these Maria Thalas as well. Well, that was the best ping of the lot, wasn't it? So that is another really good indication quickly whether or not something is genuine. The ping test is not quite so reliable on gold. You can hear there's a bit of a resonance there, but the gold is not quite so accurate for the ping test. It's just the way that the silver comes together is very different. So that is one of the ways that you can employ your sensors to see if something is really made of silver and gold. Next up, we've got weights, measurements, and dimensions testings. Now, these are really easy, and in my opinion, a pretty definitive way of testing silver coins. They're more accurate on coins than they are big, chunky, poured bars, because, of course, coins are standardized. We know the dimensions, the thicknesses, and the weights, of course, of silver coins. So getting yourself a pair of digital calipers like this is really important. These are cheap and cheerful ones from Amazon. You can get much more scientifically accurate ones, of course. These are cheap and cheerful weighing scales from China. They have a few accuracy issues. You can see here I've got a very big chunky set of weighing scales, which are my trading standard approved ones, which I was obliged to purchase because here in the United Kingdom, if you sell things by weights and measures, you have to have trading standard approved scales. And when I tested these cheap and cheerful ones, they were about three tenths of a gram out. So interesting stuff there, but they're pretty accurate nonetheless for what we want to employ at home on a budget. So weights and measures for coins are pretty standardized. You know that a one ounce silver coin should weigh 31.105 grams. You can see here though that this particular silver Britannia weighs 31.29. And we've got another Britannia here to test against it. And this one weighs 31.17. So you can see there is a differential between these two coins and they are both over 31.105. Now that's not something to worry about. Mints out there will always have a standardized minimum that they look to achieve for these bars. And they'll have a layer of uh, accuracy built into that so that when people like myself will take them and weigh them, none of the coins that they have will be less than one ounce. You can see here we've got two US Eagles, which are 31.2 and the other one here is 31.15. Now, none of these, including this one, which is actually pretty worn for its age, are less than one ounce. And that's because the mints will have that degree of leeway built into their silver coins. So having a coin, having a silver coin that weighs 31.3 is not the end of the world, especially if the dimensions are accurate. So knowing your dimensions is really key. You can find these out pretty easily online. A Britannia, silver Britannia should be 38.61 millimeters. So I mean, look at that, that's pretty good for these cheap and cheerful calipers. Dimensions wise for thickness, they should be three millimeters or thereabouts. And if we can get it onto the right point, there we go. We've got 3.06, which is pretty close for these. Uh, and it, you know, it does vary from coin to coin as well. We've seen, uh, seen on the Silver Forum people talking about uh, Queen's Beast coins, which have very, very different diameter readings depending on what part of the rim of the coin that you're testing. You can see there we've got one part of the rim which is 3.02, others with 3.10. So there's definitely degrees of accuracy around these coins that are manufactured. The same test can be employed for gold coins and this is a really good method for testing gold. You know these gold coins should of course weigh 31.105. Got a bit of free gold in here, nearly half a gram extra free gold which is fantastic. And the dimensions, of course, should be pretty accurate as well. So this one should be 32.69. So 32.63, again, with this level of accuracy of this calipers, I'm pretty confident that is quite good. So all told, pretty confident that is a gold Britannia, real gold Britannia. Now, as I said, testing things like big chunky bars of silver is not necessarily quite as accurate. We've got here a uh, 10 ounce Garris Soper bar, which was chopped in half by me. So we haven't lost any silver, but there you can see 31.18 times by 10, 311.18. So it's definitely over 10 ounces, which is again, a really good way of knowing whether or not something is real. Generally speaking though, if something has the right weights and the right dimensions and the right measurements, there's a pretty good chance it is going to be genuine. You can see here, we've got this fake panda, which theoretically should be one ounce of silver. But when we put it on here, 
immediately you can see it's nowhere near an ounce, 29.63. So that's a pretty good indication that it's fake. If we revisit my favorite fake trade dollar here, this one, I don't have the weight written down, but I know for a fact that this is underweight for what it should be. I think there should be around 28 grams. But dimensions wise, this is meant to be 38.1 millimeters. And as you can see, 37.73. That is a significant difference. And that is an indication right there that it is not a genuine coin. So the last test we're going to showcase today is a specific gravity test. And in my opinion, it's one of the most definitive tests that you can do at home on a budget. All you need is a pot of water, your weighing scales, and maybe some dental floss to tie around your coin. Now you can employ a specific gravity test on huge silver bars. I've done one on a hundred ounce bar before. I've also done it on a 10th ounce gold coin, and you can get some pretty accurate results to indicate whether or not something is genuine. So it's a really, really good test to do. And a lot of people think it's very complicated, but actually it's very simple. All you're doing in this test is measuring the relative density of a known substance, in this case water, against the test objects, the gold, silver, or potentially fake silver coins that you want to test. And it's a very simple piece of maths. We know scientifically that silver has a specific gravity of 10.49 when suspended in water and gold 19.32. So those are the kind of numbers that we're going to look to achieve today. There is always a bit of degree of accuracy with these type of tests. It's down to dis different decimal points, different weights and measures. The dental floss plays a little bit of a factor as well. But you can be pretty sure that if silver falls within anywhere between 10.4 and 10.6, it's silver. It's pure silver, different alloys of silver have different readings. And with gold, if it's anywhere around the 19.32, 19.4 mark, then you know it's pure gold. So lots of really, really good ways of testing here today, but this one I think is the most definitive. So the first thing you're going to need to do is to weigh your subject items. And we're going to weigh these ones here. So we just wait for the scales to warm up. Should have probably turned them on before, but that would have been far too much forward thinking for me. There we go. So the gold coin first is going to weigh in at 31.22. Now, of course, there is a little bit of extra weight on there for the dental floss, and that is part of the margin of error that we're gonna work with here today. But hopefully you'll see that the results still will stand. The silver coin is 31.20. And then this potentially fake, we know it's fake, but this fake silver trade dollar 26.42. So you write down the weights of those items before you then suspend them in the water. Now that's where the dental floss comes in. You want to tie the dental floss around the coin such that you'll be able to hold the coin in the water suspended without touching the sides or bottom. It's very important to have them not touching the bottom. So let's go down in the order I did it, the gold coin first. So you want to take your coin and suspend it within the water without touching the bottom or sides and record the result. So 1.6 there. You might see a few different numbers flash up. If that's the case, just choose the number which maybe flashes up the most or a kind of mean average of what is there. Now you'll see that the scales are no longer zero. That's simply because a little bit of water was taken out of the system uh, when we took the coin out. So that was by 1.6. And the ultimate goal here is to divide the weight of the coin by the weight of it suspended in the water. So we'll do that in a moment once we've got all of the measurements of these other coins. So re-zero your scales and off we go with the next one. So this Silver Britannia. So it's flitting up a little bit. I think 2.96 is the number that we want to see. So let's take that out. 2.96. And then the last one, so zero it again. And you can see it's a pretty quick and easy test. If you've prepared all of your coins with dental floss, you can go through them pretty quickly and test them all relatively easily. So here we've got three points. So that's kind of, yeah, it's about 3.14. That is the number I was gonna suggest and it settled on it nicely. It's important to have the coin in the water as still as possible. Uh, that will give you as accurate a reading as possible. So the next step is really as simple as just dividing those numbers by themselves. So 31.22 divided by 1.6 gives us a reading of 19.51. Now that might seem a little high, 
but again, it's about the degree of accuracy here. If that was divided by uh, 1.61, 1 that would have been 19.4. So there is a very, very mar small margin of error here, but the important thing is that we've got the reading of around 19, and that is immediately a great indicator that it's gold because it's very dense. Certainly when you compare it with the silver here, so we've got 31.2 divided by 2.96, and that gives a reading of 10.54. Again, a little higher than where we'd want, but not very much higher. And again, if you just move a small decimal place, like for example, if you divide by 2.97, you get exactly 10.5. So there's a small margin of error, but again, it's a really good indication. But this is where you'll see the big difference. We've got 26.42, and we're dividing by 3.14, and that gives 8.41. So immediately there, you can see the huge difference between the silver uh, pure silver Britannia and this fake trade dollar and that is in itself a really definitive way of saying that is not made of the same material that that is now this was never meant to be a pure silver coin it was meant to be a 90% silver coin and that would have had a reading of about 19.2 sorry 10.2 so it's still an awful long way away from what it should have been and that's a real quick clear indicator that it's real but you can definitely see there the difference in density between the gold and the silver. So I think that's a really good and definitive way of knowing if something is genuinely silver or genuinely gold at home on a budget. You don't need to buy very expensive big Sigma-6 metal machines or anything like that, or XRF machines. It's just a simple way that you can test your silver. I hope you guys have enjoyed today's overview of these different methods. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. Have you found fake silver coins using these methods before? What's your favorite way of testing? Do you test everything? A lot of people don't test their silver coins at all when they go into their stack. And uh, I always think there's a, a degree that you need to take for these. If you're buying hundreds of ounces of silver eagles, perhaps you don't want to test every single one, but certainly spot checking. You know, if we go back and summarize, I think the key thing here is protect yourself as a buyer, make sure you're buying from reputable sources, and you can't go too far wrong with buying from those type of sources. But it has happened that fakes have got through, so please protect yourselves. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. If you enjoyed today's video, please put a thumbs up on it and share it around on your social media. That would be very helpful for everything we do here on our channel. And if you'd like to see videos from us in the future, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed and hit the alarm bell if you want to get notifications when the videos go live. Otherwise, have a fantastic week ahead. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more.